In this section I'm going to show you how you can use replace face command and this is a very powerful command in case you want to trim, align or cut some part of the object and make sure that the face is uh, in accordance with the other objects. Uh, let me show you in this example how it works. Let's say that I want to make sure that the top face of this column is aligned with the top face of this um, kind of a box that I have here. How can I do that? I have multiple ways to do that, but if I go to dress up feature and select replace face, this is one of the things that I can do. So what am I replacing? Uh, the replacing surface is going to be this face, as a matter of fact, so I can go over this and select it, and you can see that now it shows in cyan. And what am I uh, removing? This face is going to be removed and replaced with this. So now make sure that both of them have colors. In that case, you don't receive, uh, you're not going to receive any error message. And also, you can see that this arrow here shows me that the face is going down. This is exactly what I wish to have. So I click on OK, and you can see that this is removed and aligned with this top thing. So what I'm going to do right now is press Ctrl Z, and I am going to select YZ X, X, uh, Z explain. And I am adding some other feature here to show you what it is going to do. So if I select this line, I'm going to select this, go to here, go to here, and go to here, and then press escape to finish and exit workbench. And I am going to pad this with tick surface, of course. And I am going to use mirrored extent to make sure that it covers all this part. Now, what I am going to do is to replace this face with this face. So again, I go to insert, go to dress up feature, and go to replace face command. And the replacement surface is going to be this. And now you can see that it has a color. This is very important. And you see the arrow shows downwards. This is exactly what I wish to have. And the face to remove is going to be this. Now, both of them have colors. This means that there is no problem with this. So if I click on OK, you can see that the face was replace with this. Also, let me do this one more time on other face. So, if I go here, I go to dress up feature one more time, select replace face, this face is going to replace, and what is the face to remove? I'm going to select this face, is a little hard to get, but now this has color, this has color, so there is no problem. I click on OK. It says one of the specifications cannot be taken into account. Maybe I need to reverse the arrow. So I just select this one. And again, make sure that the colors are here. And I click on OK. And now everything works just fine. So you can use different features like this to make sure that the shapes that you want to be created, you want to create, is going to be created the way that you wish. And replace face is a very nice command to align different objects to each other, like the one that you just saw. Now this command is a little different from split command. I want to show you how you can split an object into two based on a surface that you have. So I go to part two. You can see that there is a simple box here that I'm going to use this to split it into two parts. And for this, I need to have another part body. Right now you can see that I have part 2, let me zoom a little bit on the specification tree so that you can see it better. This is part 2 that has one body, and this body is a box, so let me rename it to something more uh, more obvious. So I just rename it to box. So I have this box, and what I need to have is another body to cut this body into two. So I just select parts to go to insert, go to add body, and now you can see that body two is here. I right click on that and go to properties and name this cutter face. Okay? So click on OK and make sure the cutter face is selected. I just double click on that or right click on that and select defining work object. This means that right now this body is activated. This body doesn't have anything right now. What I'm going to do is to create a sketch here and a feature. So for this sketch, I use this face of the uh, box that I have. I go to sketch environment and then here I'm going to draw some very weird spline like this. 
and finish it and I exit. Right now you can see that this is cache is under cut and paste. That's because we make sure that this is defined in work object. So I'm going to use this right now. So let me select path command and it says you should use tick surface, tick option. That's okay. I am going to use tick option, of course. And the direction should be the other side. It has 150 millimeters in one side. Let's add 25 millimeters in the other side and click on OK. This is the face that I have. And if I rotate this, you can see that this face is cutting down through, cutting through the box. Now I'm going to use this face to cut the box. And because I am splitting the box, I need to make sure that the box is the active object here. So that a split goes under box. So I just go over box here in specification tree. Right click on that and click defining work object. This means that box is the active object in my case. Now that I have made sure, I go to insert the so surface space feature and select a split. It tells me uh, what is the splitting element. And, and, and you just make sure that split is under box right now. You can see that this is under box because I made sure that box was selected. So this is the splitting surface and you can see the direction of the arrow. This means that the bottom part of the box is going to remain. And I now click on OK and you can see that with this object, I just cut this box into different parts. And the part that I wanted to remain is this. And now I can right click on cutter face and just hide it if I wish. So that the only object visible here is my box that is split into this part. 